In this video, I want to illustrate a technique for locating the image and measuring its position. With real objects, that's easy enough because you can see it, you can touch it, and you can put a ruler against it and measure it. But with the images, it's harder, both real and virtual images. So the technique that can be used is something called the parallax effect. It's a technique used in astronomy. I'm moving the camera. See how the apparent position of the nearby bar changes against the farther away background. And if any other object, like my hand, happens to be at that location, it'll move with it. So we can use this parallax effect to place a real object at the location of the image, and that'll be how we can locate the image. Okay, we'll start out with a bit more familiar example using a conversion lens or magnifying glass. So when you look at the object behind the lens, through the lens, you see a real image or you can see a real image. Um, that looks a little bit small, so let me zoom in so that you can see the image better. So that's the, that upside down globe is the real image of the globe behind the lens. Let me adjust it a little bit so that the image can be seen better. Now, when I move the camera around, you will see the parallax effect. And from the parallax effect itself, you can tell that image is much closer to us, the camera, than the lenses. The lens is actually closer to the camera than the object, but the parallax effect on the image is greater than the parallax effect on the lens. That gives us some sense of rough location of the image. Now, what we can do is place a real object, like a vertical bar, and use that to estimate the location of the image. Let me start from around here. I have a sense it's going to be closer than the image is. Yes, I see a greater parallax effect. So I'm going to move it a little bit farther from the camera. Let's try it here. Oh, I'm getting a feeling that if I place the bar at the location of the image, it's going to cover the image. But you can see from the area around the globe or image of the globe that it has the same parallax effect as the image of the globe does. And if I move it even farther, then you can now see that the parallax effect of the globe or image of the globe is larger. So the bar is farther away from the camera than the images. Let me put this here and show what uh, these objects look like. So from this side view, you can see the globe on the far side of the lens and the lens and the the bar, which marks the location of the image that is formed by the lens of the globe. And so that you can see it a little bit better here. Yeah, so we can use this same technique to locate image in other setups, and we'll do that. So that was with the real image. And let's try locating the image with the virtual image. We can use the same setup here. I can form a virtual image with a converging lens. Let me put the lens a little bit closer to the camera uh, because I have a feeling that the image will be on the other side of the lens. And I need to place the object much closer to the lens uh, within the focal length of the lens. That's how you will get it to form a virtual image. And now, when we look through the lens, we'll see the virtual image. Oh, it looks like I'll have to adjust the camera. Let me do that and I'll be right back. 
Okay, now you see the virtual image of the globe through the lens. It's quite large. And as you'll see, it's also relatively far away. As I move the camera, you will see that the parallax effect of the image is smaller than the parallax effect of the lens. I'm going to use the cabinet in the background, the cabinet door, as my measuring stick. Right now, I think I see about one cabinet door size to parallax effect as I move the camera back and forth. So I'm going to place a rod on the far side of the lens and try to position it in a location where I see the same parallax effect for the rod as I do for the image. And here you have to be careful to ignore the portion of the rod that you see through the lens. We are not seeing that, we are only looking at the top of the rod that we see over the lens so that the lens isn't changing our view. I think the parallax effect here is about the same. Um, the distortion of the lens makes it a little bit hard to see, but I think I saw about one cabinet door size to move for both of them. Yeah, here the rod is only going across maybe a third of the cabinet door on either side of the movement. So I think at this location, the rod is farther away from the lens than the image is. Okay, I've moved the object so that the image is farther away um, and also larger. <laughs> And the uh, rod is also pretty far away. It's uh, at the end of the rail. And I think around here you can see that the parallax effect of the rod and the image is about the same, maybe a fifth of the cabinet door. The distortion of the lens does make it hard to see, hard to discern the parallax effect of the image. But I think around here is when you see the about the same parallax effect, meaning where the rod was, is about where the image is. So I'm going to move the rod, and here I hope you can see that the parallax effect of the rod is a little bit larger, maybe twice as large as the parallax effect of the image. And I can... And here it's even larger, <laughs> indicating that the rod is closer, uh, much closer than the virtual image is. And I, now I can move the object to try to place the image at where the rod is. Okay, I don't think this is quite it. The image is too close. So uh, here maybe. So at this uh, position of the object, lens, and the rod, the rod is showing about the same parallax effect as the images. So this is about where the rod is located at the location of the virtual image. And from this side view, you can see the arrangement of the lens, globe, and the rod, and kind of see visually uh, where the virtual image was. And this technique using parallax effect is the only way to locate the location of the virtual image uh, by experiment. Okay, now we are going to form a virtual image with a diverging lens and use this the same technique to locate where that virtual image is. Okay, here's the virtual image through the diverging lens. It's quite small. Um, let me see if I can zoom in with the camera. Okay. Um, now, as I move the camera back and forth, I hope you will notice the parallax effect of this small virtual image. And see that it's quite large. It's... Uh, um, 
kind of a hard to compare. It, the parallax effect of that image, it seems very similar to the parallax of the lens, which is pretty close to the camera. It's definitely much larger than the parallax of the rod, which is at the far end. So I think we are going to need to place the rod between the globe and the lens, which will be a little bit tricky. All right, I think this will work. Um, so ignore the portion of the rod that is seen through the lens, which kind of covers the globe. Um, so that part isn't what we are looking at. We are looking at the top portion of the rod that's uh, seen over the lens, not through. And we are trying to see, as we move the camera back and forth, see if that portion of the rod lines up with the globe. And I don't think it does here. It looks like um, the parallax effect of the rod is smaller than the parallax effect of the image. Let me move the rod a little bit closer and see if they remain lined up this time. Yeah, I think it's lining up better. Uh, looking at the top portion of the rod and seeing if it matches with the movement of the image through image of the globe through the lens. I think they are matching up. So this is roughly this location of the rod is roughly where the virtual image is, and um, that's the arrangement of the lens, rod, and the globe that shows where the virtual image is. And what I was hoping to illustrate with this is that the small virtual image you see through a diverging lens, it's actually pretty close to the lens. It's a, a bit of a paradoxical thing in optics that, um, that large images are actually far away and small images are pretty close. And you can actually physically locate the image by use of this parallax technique. So that's all I had. Thank you and bye.